Good afternoon and welcome to St. George's Church. We've come today to celebrate and to give thanks for the life of Neil Kringle. It's good to see you, so many of you, here today to pay tribute to him. Having met him, I know that he was a man full of humour, goodwill, kindness. Um, and I've heard a number of stories over the last week or so about him and about his life. You are here because you are family, friends, colleagues, people who knew him well and shared his life with him. And so we come today to pay our last respects to him, praying that he's now at peace and rest with God, to celebrate the good things of his life and give thanks for it. We come today also to support Kath and the family, to pay for peace and strength for them in the days that lie ahead. So just for a moment, I would like you to recall Neil. Think of the person you remember, the person that you knew, and the times you've spent with him. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so now, let us just for a moment bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to stand to sing our first hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. The words will be on the screen for those of you who do not have an order of service. Please stand.
Please be seated. A reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. For everything its season, for every activity under heaven its time. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to pull down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to cry. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time for silence and a time for speech. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Here ends the lesson. I'm now going to invite Martin Robinson to um, bring the family's eulogy to us all, to hear about Neil's life. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Martin, Neil's brother-in-law, and I'm reading this on behalf of the family. Neil was born in December 1953, the youngest of Arthur and Rita Kringle's five children who run a boarding house in Clifton Terrace in Douglas. Sadly, his father died at a very early age when Neil was just three years old, following which his family moved to Williston. He attended Muddy's Road School, followed by Douglas High School for boys. From a very early age, Neil decided he was going to be a policeman. At 17, having obtained the minimum three GCSEs required, he joined the cadets. Nothing now was going to stand in his way, apart from the fact that there was a minimum height restriction and Neil was a quarter inch too short. Undeterred, he attended the physical. When his height was measured, he was told, stand up straight and take a big breath in. And hey presto, Neil made the height <laughs> and began his long, varied and fulfilling career, which we will hear much more about from his great friend and former colleague, Steve. Following his police career in 2004, he joined Douglas Barrett Borough Council as Borough Warden Manager. He enjoyed this role and found his police skills could still be used in updating and enforcing local bylaws. Dog, dog fowlers, beware. He stayed in this role until 2018, when he finally decided to embrace retirement, enjoying days out with Kath, walks with grand dog Bessie, visits to the shed and Cafe 26 for coffee and toasted tea cakes. But let's go back a, back a bit and talk about Neil. Age 17, Neil met Kath, who was attending a first aid course with her friend Leslie when, much to their great delight, a horde of police cadets walked in. Kath saw a handsome cadet, a date was arranged, and when Neil called to collect her, he swept her off her feet with the immortal romantic line, give us your mitt then. <laughs> Neil being the funny, kind and lovely man he was, Kath was bowled over by him and their relationship began. They were married in 1974 at All Saints Church and set up home in a police house on Bray Hill, later moving to Onken, where they were blessed with two lovely children, Greya and Matthew. Whilst Neil loved being a policeman, he was very much a family man, and family always came first. He loved nothing more than playing in the garden, 
going on picnics to Fort Island or Clayhead or family days out all around the island. In more recent years, Neil became a granddad to Emily, Hannah, Phoebe and Eliza. He was absolutely smitten with his four of his girls and immediately fell into the role of silly granddad. Following his retirement from the police, the opportunity of a holiday of a lifetime came along when Kath and Neil decided to go to Australia. This is somewhere they had wanted to go since eldest brother Ian had lived in Brisbane for many years. And this was cemented when Fiona had been and started most sentences with, when we were in Australia. It truly was everything they hoped for, snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef, a cruise down the Murray River, wonderful sights and experiences. It was a holiday they'd never forget. In 2003, Neil, Kath, and a group of friends started the European Cities Group, where they would visit a different city each year. 15 cities in 15 years were visited, from Budapest to Barcelona, Prague to Florence, and everywhere in between. Everybody loved these trips. They were a real highlight of the year, with great meals, lots of wine, constant laughter, plenty of sightseeing, and a little bit of getting lost. Embracing any excuse to get together with family and friends was something that Neil relished. Ever the host, no wine glass would remain empty, and he would welcome everybody with a smile and a joke. There have been so many events hosted by Neil and Kath, but Christmas was a time when Neil truly came into his element. The lights themselves probably would have made the grid operators sweat, but each year there would be something else added, most notably a pink unicorn. He said it was for the girls, but we know better. He would make sure he met up with his friends to celebrate his birthday and Christmas with some epic days which turned into nights out when they were always the last to leave with no matter where they were. And Christmas dinners. Neil was in charge and they were an extravaganza. 13 different vegetables, a turkey that weighed more than a small car, plus a spare for the following week's meals, and a spread of sandwiches for tea that everyone just hoovered up, even though all available buttons had been opened and belts loosened to their maximum. Neil had a love of driving, and not just cars. He's driven an electric tram, flown a plane, and even had to go in a tank. The fact that he enjoyed driving meant his latest role was perfect for him, as a driver for Live at Home and Hospice where he volunteered to ferry people around. Always one to help, he really enjoyed this and would free himself up whenever he was needed. In 2011, Neil found a new calling joining WASP, Murder Mystery Group, who performed a murder mystery dinner theatre across the Isle of Man. Never having dabbled in theatre before, this was a big departure for Neil, but one which he revelled in. No one, would, no one who saw him would forget his portrayals of Detective Tell a Story, Colonel Hilary Ponsonby Smythe, and of course, drawing on his extensive knowledge of Strictly Come Dancing, Craig Revel Borwood. He thoroughly enjoyed his time with Wasp, and he would fully embrace his performance side, causing much hilarity when he would forget his lines. Neil was a great sports fan, and loyally supported Manchester United since he was young. He would travel over occasionally whenever an opportunity arose to watch a live game, and he would watch as many as possible at home. Countless evenings were spent with Neil and Matthew glued to the match, beer and chipsticks in hand, discuss, discussing the merits and failings of the current team. It didn't have a positive effect on Matthew's bladder though. As soon as he went to the bathroom, Neil would shout, Goal! in an excited voice, causing Matthew to rush back, only to find nothing had happened at all. His favourite other sport to watch was Formula One. He'd watch all the races he could and was thrilled to be able to attend some races live. At Silverstone with Matthew, Monaco with Peter, 
and Belgium with Alan and Keith. He loved these trips, but for those going with him, keeping up with his beer drinking was liking, like attempting to keep up with Michael Schumacher or Lewis Hamilton. You could try, but in the end, you'd end up in the gravel or slumped in the pits. Neil loved spending time with people. He had an impact on everyone he met, as shown by how many people have attended today, but especially so on his family. Family was everything to Neil. He was incredibly proud of his children, as he so often would say, and was a huge part of their lives from babies until now. Helping and supporting in any way he could, regularly spending time with both children and their families, and was a wonderful dad and granddad. The heart of the family, who always joined in the fun, made everyone laugh and gave the best hugs. He was gifted with a warm heart and was always put others first, none more so than his cat, though. His love for her was unending, and they lived a life full of fun and happiness. Last week, they would have celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary, wholly committed, wholly devoted, and wholly in love after all these years. And, is that, and that is where we must end this tribute to Neil. Everyone who had the pleasure to meet him are the richer for it. He wore a constant smile and was generous with his time and love. We will all miss him terribly. But we will remember his warmth, his cheekiness, and the memories we have of him. And to live life like him, with generosity, a smile, and a positive and happy outlook, will mean a life well lived. Now I invite uh, Superintendent Steve Maddox to also pay tribute today. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Neil's wife, Kath, asked would I say a few words about Neil's service in the police, just in addition to what we've heard from Martin. This was extremely um, an honour for me to do. And I said I would be honoured to do it and called upon Neil's friends and colleagues to assist me in capturing his service with the Isle of Man Constabulary. Looking through his personal service file, I could see that Neil had always wanted to join the police. On one of the later application forms Neil made to become a sergeant, he wrote, a career with the police service is the only one I have ever wished to pursue from when I was a young schoolboy. In fact, he first applied to be a police cadet when he was 15 years and four months, which is the same age as my eldest daughter now, only to be told by the chief constable at that time he was too young and to re reapply again when he was 16. When you think of it now, he was still only a boy, but he did apply again uh, and he was successful. Looking through his record, it was clear he was articulate, clever and well-read and he scored very highly in his entrance exam. He was accepted and began work as a cadet on the 28th of September, 1970. On the 9th of December, 1972, his 19th birthday, he became probationary constable number 31 and was fully established two years later on his 21st birthday. The commandant from the police training centre in Warrington, a place called Bruges, which I'm sure lots of people in this church will uh, remember, um, said on his final report, he maintained a good standard by study and should prove to be a capable officer. Neil conducted uniform duties for a number of years and one of the most significant events in Manx history, the Summerland Fire in 1973, was an event Neil was involved in. Again, like lots of other police officers and emergency service workers, he was only a young man as he was still only a teenager at the time it happened. The resilience he showed when faced with this kind of experience is truly something to be admired, particularly in this day and age. The steel-like resilience was later mirrored when dealing with his illness. In 1978, Neil transferred to the port unit, and then in 1981, he went into CID to train as a detective. 
As part of that training, there was an initial course in criminal investigation which was held at Hutton Hall in Lancashire. And again, that's another place people in here will remember. Um, he scored 90% and 86% in the final two exams, which was the highest in his class. The assessment completed by the course trainer read, he was already contributed to classroom discussion and could be relied upon to give authoritative contributions to the topics under review. A popular student, he mixed easily with his colleagues and he took full advantage of the sporting and social activities arranged within the course. Neil was a good detective and he soon developed an interest within the scenes of crimes department where he was posted in December 1982. During his time there, he and his friend and colleague Paul Davenport, or TAF as we all know him, introduced colour photography, improved on the processes for forensic examination, latent fingerprinting and crime scene management and the better handling and continuity of exhibits. This is something Neil was very proud of and he held the Soco department very dear to him. I remember Neil uh, picking me up from the back lane of the house I was living in at the time, and Neil had told me he'd spent a couple of days at the back doing some forensic work following a particularly nasty stranger attack in 1985. I did some research on the job, and it was an excellent example uh, of proper detective and forensic work that saw the person responsible caught very quickly and prosecuted successfully for the crimes. Neil passed his sergeant inspector's exams fairly quickly and in September 1988 he was placed in the ports unit when it became the special branch unit. This entailed responsibility for counter-terrorism and the security of our ports and airport uh, where he spent seven years improving and developing the department. Neil's detective inspector at the time, Robbie Walls, said that when colleagues and counterparts from other jurisdictions came to the island or they went to them, uh, in their respective areas. It was apparent Neil was well known and popular amongst the other delegates. This made Neil a great ambassador for the constabulary. In fact, some people used to say to Robbie when he was going away, you're only going away for a jolly, Robbie. And he said, yes, it's jolly hard keeping up with Neil. <laughs> Neil and Robbie became close colleagues and good friends. And I laughed to read an appraisal Robbie did for Neil that under the heading personal um, attributes said, he is a respected and mature individual who is reasonably fit, regularly, in brackets, but not enough, playing squash against another aged member of the CID. Neil spent some time in the fraud squad before taking up promotion to inspector, where he spent time in Douglas and then as the head of the prosecution's department at a time the police still prosecuted summary offences. He was an extremely proficient prosecutor, knowledgeable and articulate, and respected by both the judiciary and the law society. And a local advocate contacted me when he heard the sad news of Neil's death and wrote, very sorry to hear about Neil. He was always brilliant to deal with when I was a young advocate, a very decent man. Amongst the other additional duties Neil undertook, he was an authorized firearms officer, a police search advisor, where he received glowing recognition from the Home Office, as well as high praise from the then Chief Constable Robin Oak on Neil's assistance as military liaison officer for a Tinwell Day visit. Mr. Oak wrote to Neil saying, I know they appreciated your expertise and the way in which you moulded into their team and they were at pains to let me know of your proficiency. Neil, Taff and others also took over the running of the Police Sports and Social Club where officers, support staff, friends and families could use the facility. I, like others here, will remember lots of good memories and fantastic nights in the social club, which helped with the staff's morale and well-being. He was also a member of the Police Federation, where he represented the rank of inspector. Neil finished his police career as the head of the Operational Support Unit, or Traffic in Old Money, on the 1st of June 2003, where he served 33 years loyal and dedicated service. He continued to work closely with the police on taking up his second career as the bylaws enforcement officer for Douglas Corporation. When he was there, he continued to help and offer guidance to Douglas community policing uh, teams that worked there in tackling antisocial behaviour, crime and disorder, and also dog fouling, as Martin said. One of the local policemen on that team, who hadn't even joined the police by the time Neil had retired, 
came to see me when he heard of Neil's death and said how supportive he was, offering guidance on how best to deal with certain issues. Neil spanned five decades in the police and law enforcement before he finally retired. Neil taught, taught me lots of things over the time I knew him. Lots about policing, but also about life and family. He was a very kind, funny and social man, and I will always remember celebrating his 70th birthday last December. And as Neil put it in a text to me when he told me and others of his illness, at least I have some very good memories. I think everyone who attended his celebration will have the same memories as Neil. Robbie Walls, who remained good friends with Neil and would meet him for lunch, wrote, no matter what position or role he was required to do, he always did it with humour, integrity and dedication. He was a great ambassador for the force. I think that sums up Neil's service very well. Neil will always be remembered and we will all have our own memories about him, which I am sure we will share afterwards. There are some legendary stories of him showing officers from the Royal Ulster Constabulary the Manx hospitality after the business of the day was done. One officer, who Neil and Simon Lowe nicknamed Eric the Viking, experienced something most of Neil's friends and colleagues have experienced at one time or another, and that's being cringled. <laughs> Such was his standing. I met a man whilst on duty in Peel, only last TT, who stopped and spoke to me. During our conversations, he told me he was an XRUC officer and he used to come to the island where we'd meet up with Mike Musson and Neil Kringle, but he said they were probably before my time. I assured him that I knew them both very well and he spoke so very fondly of them and said what a great man Neil was. Neil was cl clearly a very proud policeman, but this really pales into insignificance to how proud he was of his wife Kath, uh, daughter Greya, son Matthew, uh, his grandchildren and his wider family. He was very much, first and foremost, a family man and will be sorely missed by everyone. The last thing Neil said to me was, Mr. Dog, we must go for a pint sometime. Well, I will very much look forward to that, Mr. C. God bless, thank you. What a wonderful tribute to a wonderful man. People I've spoken to say he was a real gentleman, he was funny, he was a good man, a lovely man. And uh, I'm sure that's been reflected today in those tributes we've heard about him. Yes, we're here to celebrate Neil's life because he's had a good life, a full life. You might recall back before our tributes, we heard that reading from Ecclesiastes. And it reminds us in all of us that there is a time to be born, a time to die. And as we look at life and look back on the years that have gone by, as we do on days like this, as we've heard just now, what's the best we could hope for? What's the best we could wish for in life? For ourselves and those whom we love and care about. Well, I think it's first and foremost that we should live good and happy lives. There's a proverb that says that God will judge us by whether we've enjoyed the good things he's given us or whether we've spurned them. Well, I reckon that's true, and I certainly reckon that's true of Neil in his life. He made much of enjoying the things he's been given the opportunities he's had, and the life he's lived. So for Neil, we can feel that it has been a life well lived. And I've no doubt that from time to time, 
He probably has had his own share of ups and downs. We all do. That's inevitable in life. But you know, he's faced them with courage and humour and friendship. And as we look back, we couldn't wish his life had been any other way. We look back on his life with happiness. It was good. It was full. And it was challenging. The second thing we would wish for ourselves and our loved ones is that we should be part of the world's healing, not part of its hurt. And that's what also you will remember about Neil. By his generosity of love, his judgment, by genuine concern for others, by his humour, by his practical help. Neil was a plus in this community. A giver, not a taker. Someone who gave and gave out of his heart and out of generosity. Always looking to others, we've heard that in the tributes paid. Helped where he could, did deeds of kindness. I'm sure there are lots of shared memories, some perhaps that you wouldn't share here, but we'll share after over a drink, I'm sure, as you toast Neil's life. Memories are precious treasured by family and by friends, all pointing to the good, kind and caring man who you knew with a big heart and a great sense of humour. Today you will all be remembering fondly and with a degree of indebtedness, good relationships, good deeds done, and you can recall his life happily. We would also wish for ourselves and our loved ones when our lives end is that we should be do so peacefully and easily. We would not have wanted Neil to suffer more than he did. And lastly, I think we would want for ourselves and our loved ones to be surrounded by the love of our families, the affection of our friends and the respect of our acquaintances when our time comes. That's indeed true of Neil. And the evidence is in all of you here gathered today and those who join us via live stream. Many more not able to be here today. filled with memories. Our reading from Ecclesiastes reminds us that there is a time and a season for everything. These words seem so appropriate for us today. For everything, there is a season. A time to be born, a time to die. In an instant, in one short sentence, that writer reminds us of how fragile life can be. But perhaps time shouldn't be measured by hours or days or years. Perhaps our lives should be measured by our relationships that we have with others. Neil has enjoyed life. He's worked hard and he's done his best, especially for Kath, for Greer and for Matthew, and for all his family. And you can't ask for anything more. Further on in the passage, and we didn't hear it today from Ecclesiastes, it says this, God has made everything beautiful in its time. And it goes on to say, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them 
may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift from God. That perhaps sums up Neil's life. He enjoyed life. He made the most of what he had. And that was God's gift to Neil. And Neil was God's gift to us. Yesterday is a time for mourning and a time for remembering. Our lives are a gift from God. And how we live our lives is important. There's a season for all of us. And one day we will be called to account. Today is also a day of comfort. It's a time to give thanks. It's a time to remember that Jesus said ah, he would never leave us, he would never forsake us, and he was going to prepare a place for us. And even in the midst of death, we can believe in him. This season of life as we know it for Neil is now over. And he enters a new season. We pray today safe in God's care and in God's keeping. And we're asked to trust. And that's all we can do. Trust that God will take care of him till you meet again. So yes, today is a time of grieving, of celebrating, of remembering. But it's also a time and a day for comfort and hope. So let us thank God for Neil's life. Commend him into his care. And may we trust that God will take care of him. In Jesus' name, may Neil rest in peace. Amen. We're now going to have a time of reflection as we uh, listen and uh, hear a recording.
Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of Neil, for the love and mercy he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice in your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time we may share with him that clearer vision when we shall see your face in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith who now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn. And especially today, we pray for Kath. For Greer and for Matthew. For grandchildren, Emily, Hannah, Phoebe and Eliza. For his brothers and sister, Alan, Fiona and Nina. A wider family and friends, and all who will now miss him. We pray that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the silence, we bring our own thoughts and our own prayers to God. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life. Until the shades lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father. And so now we stand to sing, Lord of all hopefulness.
in a moment or two, the Kath and the family will be leaving um, to make our way to uh, Douglas Crematorium. You're asked to remain in church until the family have left and then make your way to the talk of the town where you can share your memories and thoughts and meet the family there after the service. So for a moment, let us remain standing as we commend Neil into God's unfailing care. God, our creator and redeemer, by, the power, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises. We entrust Neil to your mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be upon Neil and upon you and all whom you love and care about this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>